-hmm. Well, when I looked at what the possibilities were, there were opportunities in the mid-90s. Uh, at the time, when the web first came about, for me, mm -hmm. it was very primitive. You know, at best, a very slow display of a still mm -hmm. image. This was in stark contrast to the level I was working on in video. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, even a simple page of text, information with an image, the ability to have mm -hmm. global or nearly you know, wired world mm -hmm. distribution of this information mm -hmm. without the gatekeepers mm -hmm. was intriguing to me. So the question was, as the internet scales, as the data pipes become more consumed with basically television, the inversion of the net, I saw this as a doom in the future, that the edge, the intelligence of the network being at the edge was being re-inverted, the many-to-many -many model, mm -hmm. for example, that Howard Rheingold wrote about, that allowed the internet to grow and the establishment of virtual mm -hmm. communities was being inverted and was being sucked in back to a centralized model of control. Mm -hmm. And once the old media corporations got their hands on the internet and perverted its potential from being a decentralized many-to-many peer-to-peer network back to a centralized one, I saw that the danger was the internet was going to turn into cable TV, where content from the edge would not necessarily reach everybody at the other edge. Mm -hmm. So in 1995, as I saw the internet transition from a research academic network where commercial use was actually forbidden by the acceptable use policy. Mm -hmm. Commercialization of the internet also posed a threat to independent development, mm -hmm. content and production and distribution, especially mm -hmm. distribution. Mm -hmm. So the answer to that was, the premise was the only way to assure the existence and the uh, universal distribution of independent, non-corporate, non-commercial art mm -hmm. content, cultural content, was to be able to buy the bandwidth. Mm -hmm. Because unlike the broadcasting spectrum, which is regulated in this country at least, and, and the concept of the global commons, the airwaves, the electromagnetic mm -hmm. frequency spectrum being public resource mm -hmm. like the oceans, the internet in its physical infrastructure is privately, corporately owned. Mm -hmm. So the question was how to establish some kind of public space or public access and assure that in a non-commercial cultural way in this climate of, uh, in this privately owned world. How to create commercial space, I mean how to, I'm sorry, how to create public space mm -hmm. in a commercially owned world. There are three common myths about the internet. That is that the internet is public, that it has no borders, and that it has no center. These are all false. The internet is not public because it's privately owned infrastructure in an unregulated environment. The internet is not borderless, although it appears that we can communicate transparently across continents. Mm -hmm. But in fact, borders are built into the protocol. In fact, what makes the internet able to exchange traffic is a protocol called Border Gateway Protocol, or BGP. Border mm -hmm. Gateway Protocol. And every switch, every router where a network interconnects with another one is a border. And the firewalls are the customs police that decide which packets can pass or not. So it's a very selective and very controlled process. Mm -hmm. And if you look at a map of the internet, it, in my description, is a loose confederation of corporate nation states who control private infrastructure. And they exchange the traffic only because they agree to, not because they're required to. So therefore, at each corporate boundary, at each corporate firewall that of, the, of the network mm -hmm. backbone providers is a border. Mm -hmm. The third myth is that there is no center. There is a center at least as it is in operation today, and that's the root domain. Mm -hmm. The root domain is the center of the internet, which is essential to routing or directing mm -hmm. traffic based on the use of the domain name system. And this essential facility, the root server, the A root server, 
because it's set up in a hierarchical delegation of authority in a master-slave relationship. Sounds like colonialism somehow. <laughs> hierarchical delegation of authority is a military model. Centralized command and control is a military model. So the fact that people have a perception that the internet has no center and has no borders is only that. It's a perception. It's not a reality. And in fact, the centralized command and control through the root domain is a way of soft switching traffic on and off. For example, the root file, root zone file. Mm -hmm. The root zone file is text, text file, ASCII text. To make an entry of a domain or to delete an entry of the domain is a matter of text editing. You could do it with no technical experience. The fact that the company or the entities that control that have very, very strong ties to the US government. They're basically Pentagon contractors, or SAIC, for example, who owned Network Solutions at the time of the inception of the namespace lawsuit, mm -hmm. was basically their board of directors. If you were to enter one of their board meetings, you would may make the mistaken impression that you've entered the retirement club of the National Security Agency, mm -hmm. the Pentagon, the CIA, etc because their board of directors contain the former chiefs of the CIA, the NSA, the FBI, or other government agencies, uh, generals, you know, people like uh, Melvin Laird, who was the Secretary of Defense during the Vietnam War, or Bobby Ray Inman, who was the Chief of Naval Intelligence, while George Bush Sr. was the head of the CIA. Donald Hicks, Robert Gates, former head of the CIA. These were basically the ones who were in control of the internet. So SAIC, if you were to look at their corporate profile, their largest customers, you know, they're a private company, privately held. So there's no public disclosure of their finances or anything else because they're not traded on the stock market. Their largest clients are the National Security Agency, the Pentagon, and the IRS, and a handful of other like large corporations, Bechtel or something like this. Uh, so what does that tell you is that we have basically the private spooks with their hand on the control point of the Internet. Now, it's not only a matter of control, because if you understand operation of root and top-level domain servers, it's also, in my opinion, potentially a key technical point for the functioning of Echelon. Echelon being the so-called global surveillance system. Because what it enables you to do, if you were to watch the traffic queries on a root domain server or a top-level domain server, mm -hmm. you see high-level traffic transactions for every email message, every web hit that's done virtually all over the internet. So that's a high-level way you can get a behavioral snapshot of who's talking to whom. Well, put it this way, one can't discount that this is the possibility, understand? I mean, look, we, we had uh, George Orwell wrote about things like this. We know about ideas of surveillance and control. Whether or not it was designed from the beginning, I don't know. You should ask Professor Wiener that question. I really can't speak for them or answer for them. All I know is what is the result, how it functions, and the extraordinary means to which the government and the corporations went to keep control, to stop that control from moving to the edge or becoming decentralized. Now, the namespace model was about enabling or transitioning the domain system to the edge, making it peer-to-peer, -peer, mm -hmm. not making it a centralized command and control model, making the global function one of interdependence and equal responsibility. And this I saw ultimately as a kind of a digital realm of technical implementation of a democracy by technical means, because it requires agreement and cooperation on a technical scale. And in fact, the whole idea of the Internet Engineering Task Force or the people who were really energetic in making the net work is this idea of consensus not authoritarianism, but consensus. And uh, the whole idea is rough consensus and running code. I'm sure probably everybody you interviewed used that line. Mm -hmm. But when it really comes down to it, mm -hmm. there's not this consensus because it's ultimately 
in the hands of who controls the corporate infrastructure of the net. And this is where it interfaces with the government. So the namespace model is meant to decentralize and create a peer situation, not a command and control situation. Yeah? And this has a great implication for local autonomy and global cooperation. Mm -hmm. So this is the whole question that we have faced now, for example, with globalization. Mm -hmm. you know, if you look at the internet as a kind of digital media globalization, okay, and the fact that it's not governed by our constitution, like for example in the United States, there's no First Amendment protection per se on the internet because where the government is not involved in restricting speech, there's no protection, there's no constitutional mm -hmm. protection. When your governance is a corporate contract that you sign with AOL, Time Warner, mm -hmm. or Microsoft, their First Amendment right is protected against you, you see? Mm -hmm. You're not protected as an individual. You don't have any rights. Your rights are only that as a consumer, you see? So we're not be becoming citizens anymore. We're not netizens anymore. We're consumers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the point behind namespace ultimately then is about autonomy and self-determination, ultimately leading to a democracy of the digital commons, which today is lacking and is totally threatened as the consolidation of corporate control over media and the shutting off, the filibustering, the discrediting, the censoring of independent voices through economic warfare, basically, by crushing them economically, predatory pricing, a violation of antitrust laws. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, denial of access. Uh, these are the functions that are happening now that threaten not only the namespace project from reaching its final conclusion, which is universal recognition of our domains and autonomous control and a decentralized, mm -hmm. uh, localized database mm -hmm. system, but in general. And unfortunately, people don't understand this because as even people who we know and respect don't use computers and are dismissive or don't understand this. They think it's a new model that's foreign from political or social systems. It's not. This is corporate fascism. Basically, the future of the internet going along the lines of the World Trade Organization and corporate globalization is corporate fascism. And there's a threat not only to media democracy, but to democracy. We become consumers. We're not citizens anymore. We lose our rights where our local law and our local protection in the real world, not only in the digital world, but one reflects the other, is being replaced by corporate contracts. Mm -hmm. That's what we're threatened by. And so a simple thing like signing up for WTO.sucks, or I think uh, Reverend Billy is going to do Starbucks.sucks, <clears throat> would actually create a wave of digital democracy that can extend not only the means to communicate that but to support this mm -hmm. autonomous infrastructure. Yeah. This means you think a digi digital future is coming. No, the digital future is here. Is he no, not but for all of us. But the corporate fascism. Not for, no, it's all, not for all of us. Not, not for all of us, but it's established enough that the ripple effect mm -hmm. will take place over the next two to three decades, as any impact of the advent of radio, advent of television, the whole idea of you know, the American consumer model, why people in Europe felt threatened by the American consumer model, yet at the same time were very intoxicated by it, very seduced mm -hmm. by that. And in fact, I remember when I first went to Europe in the 80s that the televisions were state the telecommunications infrastructure were state-run, mm -hmm. then became slowly privatized. There's still, of course, some state-run TV, which to a point was a good thing. But now, in a sense, even though the way government goes now, I prefer not to have government in my life, or as little as possible. I also don't prefer to have corporations in my life either, because this whole concept of corporate governance where the glo corporate globalization overwhelms or replaces, supplants our local sovereignty and our local law. Mm -hmm. this, is a, this is a threat. So 
we have to find some kind of a balance where the citizen matters, where we are citizens and where we're not consumers. And mm -hmm. I think the only way that we can do this at this point is that the citizens have to recognize each other, that they have power, and to mm -hmm. find a way to con consolidate that. And to do this through networks, because the first means of communication, look, truth is the first casualty of war. Mm -hmm. People's perception of truth is shaped by the media. Why the term of art in information warfare is perception management. Mm -hmm. You know, it's this very military corporate mm -hmm. thing, if you think about it, management. And managing perception, well, advertising is information warfare. The way we perceive the news, the way events are presented to us, is from a very military corporate point of view. You know, when Dan Rather broke down and cried on television on David Letterman and said, oh, well, our dear leader W. Bush, I'll do whatever you want me to do. He proclaimed his complicity to this mm -hmm. kind of strangled hold over the media that the government mm -hmm. and corporate structures are putting. And basically, they're, they're seducing the public mm -hmm. into this fame and sensation, you know, coming from Andy Warhol, everything, everybody will have their 15 minutes of fame. What I say is, and what we need to do is, look, you can forget about 15 minutes of fame. What about five minutes of truth? 